Nobody talks about the real reason your belly fat refuses to budge, even when you're eating perfectly and exercising daily. The medical establishment knows something about visceral fat that changes everything. Research from multiple universities has revealed that visceral fat, the deep belly fat wrapping around your organs, contains significantly higher concentrations of cortisol receptors compared to other fat deposits. This creates a biological trap that most people never escape. When cortisol levels stay elevated, your liver continuously releases glucose into your bloodstream, forcing your pancreas to produce insulin. That insulin then shuts down fat burning completely, regardless of whether you're eating keto, fasting, or following any other diet plan. This cycle explains why tens of thousands of people do everything right nutritionally but see zero results. The problem isn't your willpower. The problem is a hormonal pattern that keeps regenerating itself unless you interrupt it at the source. The research I'm sharing comes from peer-reviewed studies. Scientists at institutions worldwide have documented these mechanisms. A study from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism confirmed that visceral adipose tissue has increased cortisol receptor density compared to subcutaneous fat. Research published in Diabetes Care demonstrated the connection between cortisol, glucose metabolism, and insulin resistance. When doctors at major research hospitals measure cortisol production rates and visceral fat deposits, they consistently find strong correlations. Men with higher cortisol production show significantly more visceral fat accumulation and reduced insulin sensitivity. Your stress hormone directly influences where your body stores fat and how effectively your cells respond to insulin. Understanding this connection changes everything about weight management and metabolic health for people over 40. Visceral fat possesses a higher density of glucocorticoid receptors than other adipose tissue regions. When cortisol circulates through your bloodstream, it binds preferentially to these receptors in your abdominal fat cells. Visceral fat acts as an active endocrine organ, producing inflammatory compounds and interfering with normal metabolic function. The more cortisol your abdominal fat absorbs, the more resistant your cells become to insulin signaling. When cortisol levels rise from psychological stress, sleep deprivation, or dietary factors, your liver responds by breaking down glycogen stores and releasing glucose. This is a survival mechanism designed to provide quick energy during genuine emergencies. The problem occurs when this mechanism activates repeatedly throughout the day and night. Your pancreas detects the glucose surge and releases insulin to manage blood sugar levels. When insulin levels are elevated, your body receives a clear signal, stop burning fat for fuel. Fat oxidation shuts down completely. Even if you're eating in a calorie deficit and exercising daily, high cortisol drives glucose release, which triggers insulin, which blocks fat burning. First, trap number one, midnight cortisol surge. During sleep, your body should be repairing tissues and burning fat for energy. For millions of people, something different happens between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. As blood glucose drops during the night, your brain monitors these levels. When glucose falls below a certain threshold, your hypothalamus interprets this as a threat. Your adrenal glands respond by releasing cortisol to stimulate glucose production. This cortisol surge does three things. First, it wakes you up, often suddenly with your heart beating faster. Second, it signals your liver to convert stored glycogen to glucose and release it into your bloodstream. Third, this glucose spike triggers insulin secretion. Research published in Diabetes Care found that these nighttime glucose fluctuations significantly impair insulin sensitivity and reduce overnight fat oxidation. When you wake up feeling puffy, bloated, and craving carbohydrates, you're experiencing the after effects of this midnight hormonal cascade. Many people attribute these symptoms to the food they ate for dinner, 
when the actual culprit is the cortisol-driven glucose dump occurring during sleep. Next, trap number two, excessive cardio. Long duration cardiovascular exercise, jogging for 45 minutes, running 5K distances multiple times weekly, extended treadmill sessions, elevates cortisol levels significantly and keeps them elevated for hours after you finish. Studies published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology demonstrate that prolonged aerobic exercise increases cortisol production, breaks down muscle tissue, reduces metabolic rate over time, increases hunger hormones, and disrupts glucose insulin dynamics. The irony becomes clear when you see people doing extensive cardio specifically to lose belly fat, yet their midsection grows larger over time. The exercise itself triggers the hormonal pattern that stores more visceral fat. Walking differs completely. Research shows that walking at a moderate pace supports healthy cortisol regulation, enhances insulin sensitivity, and promotes fat oxidation without triggering stress responses. Walking after meals proves particularly effective, with studies showing it reduces postprandial glucose significantly. Short, intense movements, like sprinting, create a different hormonal response. Brief, high-intensity efforts stimulate growth hormone production, a powerful fat-burning and muscle-building hormone, while avoiding prolonged cortisol elevation. The key distinction is duration and intensity, short and intense versus long and moderate. Next, trap number three, overfasting without recovery. Intermittent fasting offers significant metabolic benefits when implemented correctly. Research confirms that time-restricted eating improves insulin sensitivity, activates cellular cleaning processes called autophagy, and supports healthy aging. The problem emerges when people combine extended fasting with intense exercise and insufficient recovery time. Both fasting and exercise are hormetic stressors, beneficial when applied strategically. When combined excessively, they create chronic stress that elevates cortisol beyond beneficial ranges. When cortisol rises too high, your liver releases glucose even though you haven't consumed any food. This glucose triggers insulin secretion, which blocks fat oxidation. You believe you're in a fasted, fat-burning state, but your hormones tell a different story. Your body is burning glucose released by stress hormones rather than stored body fat. This explains why some people practice rigorous intermittent fasting, yet see minimal fat loss. Their cortisol levels are driving glucose production and insulin secretion that counteract the fasting benefits. The solution isn't abandoning fasting. The solution is balancing fasting duration with adequate protein intake, sufficient recovery time, and appropriate exercise intensity. Your body needs windows of rebuilding to counterbalance the catabolic stress of fasting and training. Now let's see the solution number one, evening eating cutoff. Research from the Salk Institute demonstrates that insulin sensitivity decreases significantly after sunset. When you eat late in the evening, your body requires substantially more insulin to process the same food compared to earlier in the day. Elevated insulin at night suppresses growth hormone production. Growth hormone is released during deep sleep and serves as one of your body's most powerful fat-burning signals. When insulin remains high during sleep, growth hormone release is blunted, reducing overnight fat oxidation and tissue repair. By stopping food intake at least three hours before bedtime, you allow insulin levels to decline before sleep begins. This timing supports several beneficial processes. Cortisol naturally decreases, insulin drops to baseline, sleep quality improves, growth hormone production increases, and fat burning continues throughout the night. This single adjustment has helped 
thousands of people finally achieve the overnight fat burning they've been working toward. Your body can perform its intended nighttime functions, detoxification, cellular repair, and fat metabolism when you remove the insulin interference that late eating creates. Next, solution number two, nighttime blood sugar stabilization. For people who consistently wake between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. with racing hearts and active minds, a simple intervention can restore sleep quality. One tablespoon of raw honey mixed with a pinch of sea salt consumed either before bed or upon waking. This works through specific metabolic pathways. Honey contains both glucose and fructose that your liver processes efficiently. The glucose provides immediate fuel, preventing the blood sugar drop that triggers cortisol release. The fructose replenishes liver glycogen stores. Sea salt provides electrolytes that stabilize cellular function and prevent mineral imbalances that trigger cortisol surges. These components give your brain adequate fuel throughout the night without triggering the alarm response that releases cortisol. Your cortisol stays low, your insulin stays low, and you remain asleep while fat burning continues. This intervention temporarily affects your fasting window slightly, but quality sleep is more important than a perfect fast. As your cortisol patterns improve over time, you'll likely find you no longer need this intervention. For now, prioritizing sleep restoration takes precedence. Next, solution number three, post-meal movement. A meta-analysis published in Sports Medicine examined multiple studies on post-meal activity. The research showed that light walking after eating reduced glucose levels by approximately 17% compared to remaining seated. Even brief walks of two to five minutes produced measurable benefits. When you walk after a meal, your muscles actively pull glucose from your bloodstream without requiring additional insulin. This insulin-independent glucose uptake means lower insulin levels, which translates to reduced cortisol triggering, decreased visceral fat storage, improved sleep quality, and faster metabolic recovery. A 10 to 20 minute walk after your largest meal provides optimal benefits. The timing matters, Walking immediately after eating or within 30 minutes produces the strongest glucose lowering effects. Research from the American Diabetes Association confirms that this simple practice significantly improves 24-hour glucose control. This intervention requires no equipment, no gym membership, no special skills. You simply stand up after eating and walk at a comfortable pace for 10 to 20 minutes the metabolic benefits are substantial and immediate. Next, solution number four, protein targets and strategic fasting. Adequate protein intake during your eating window ensures your body maintains muscle mass, supports metabolic function, and produces amino acids needed for physiological processes. Research indicates aiming for approximately one gram of protein per pound of your ideal body weight, not your current weight, but your target weight. If your goal weight is 140 pounds, consume roughly 140 grams of protein daily during your eating window. As long as you're meeting this protein requirement, continue your fasting practice. If your eating window is too short to consume adequate protein, consider adjusting your fasting schedule. Once you're consistently hitting protein targets, incorporate one 24-hour fast weekly. Research shows that occasional extended fasts activate autophagy, your body's cellular recycling program, boost growth hormone production, improve liver function, and enhance insulin sensitivity. The key is sequence. Establish adequate protein consumption first, then add extended fasting. Attempting extended fasts without sufficient protein intake on other days leads to muscle loss, metabolic slowdown, and cortisol dysregulation. Get the foundation right, then add advanced strategies. Next, solution number five, sprint intervals. Brief, high-intensity efforts produce dramatically different hormonal responses compared to long, steady cardio. Research shows that 30-second maximal sprints significantly elevate growth hormone levels for several hours after exercise. Growth hormone serves as cortisol's natural counterbalance. 
where chronic cortisol elevation breaks down tissues and stores fat, growth hormone builds lean tissue and mobilizes fat stores. Sprint-type exercise stimulates growth hormone without the prolonged cortisol elevation that long-duration cardio produces. The practical application is simple. Perform one or two rounds of 20-second maximum intensity efforts twice weekly. This could be sprinting, cycling at maximum resistance, or even fast walking up a steep hill if you're starting from a deconditioned state. The effort should feel genuinely difficult. You should be breathing hard and unable to maintain that pace beyond 20 seconds. Rest completely for several minutes before attempting a second round. These brief sessions improve insulin sensitivity, stimulate fat-burning hormones, preserve muscle mass, and support healthy cortisol patterns, all without excessive training volume. Maximum benefit from minimum time investment. Next, solution number six, gratitude practice. Research published in Psychosomatic Medicine demonstrates that gratitude practice produces measurable physiological changes. Studies show that people who regularly practice gratitude experience reduced cortisol levels, with one study showing a 23% reduction in stress hormone levels. Gratitude activates your parasympathetic nervous system, the calming branch of your autonomic nervous system. This activation triggers the release of oxytocin, a hormone that directly reduces cortisol production. Multiple studies confirm that gratitude practices improve heart rate variability, enhance sleep quality, reduce inflammatory markers, and support healthy glucose metabolism. This isn't philosophical advice. This is practical endocrinology. When you actively generate feelings of appreciation and thankfulness, your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis responds by reducing stress hormone output. Your cortisol levels decline, insulin sensitivity improves, and fat burning processes can function normally. Daily gratitude practice can take many forms. Writing three things you're genuinely thankful for each morning, verbally expressing appreciation to people in your life, or taking two minutes before sleep to mentally review positive aspects of your day. The specific method matters less than the consistency and genuine emotional engagement. Your hormones aren't broken. They're responding exactly as designed to the inputs you're giving them. The problem is that modern living creates inputs that trigger survival responses continuously. Visceral fat concentrates cortisol receptors, making your belly fat uniquely responsive to stress hormones. Elevated cortisol stimulates glucose release. Rising glucose triggers insulin secretion. High insulin shuts down fat burning. Chronic cardio keeps cortisol elevated. Nighttime eating blocks growth hormone. Midnight blood sugar drops trigger cortisol surges. Excessive fasting without recovery adds more stress. Each factor compounds the others, but you're not trapped. Stop eating three hours before bed. Use honey and salt if you wake at night. Walk after meals, meet your protein targets. Replace long cardio with brief sprints. Practice genuine gratitude daily. These aren't quick fixes. They're sustainable approaches that work with your physiology. They address the hormonal patterns creating the problem instead of fighting symptoms. If this information helped you, click the like button. Share this with someone struggling despite doing everything right. Subscribe for more evidence-based health information.